Okay, now let's uh, step, start the second video. So uh, before we actually talk, uh, talk about the new results, I would like to mention that in uh, Antoni Song's result, this inequality only holds when uh, an ambient dimension is between uh, seven and three, okay? And when the dimension is higher, the, in the, the lower bound will be, uh, uh, will be the measure of the singular set. So this is due to the regularity results of Shane and Simon. All right, so now let's uh, move on to the new results. So the first theorem, theorem I would like to mention is, uh, uh, was obtained recently. Um, let MG be a three-dimensional Riemannian manifold uh, without boundary that is isometrically embedded in some uh, Euclidean space with dimension D. And let sigma be a closed immersed CMC surface of genus G, so it doesn't have to be embedded. And here, uh, for simplicity, uh, we just consider CMC surface with non-zero mean culture, uh, because when the mean culture is zero, we can uh, simply think it as a, as a minimal surface. And the index estimate was already uh, obtained, and our estimate was was uh, no better. So let's just focus on. Uh, non-zero mean culture cases. And in such cases, uh, in, uh, all the CMC surfaces are two-sided because uh, the, the unit normal vector field induces the trivial, trivialization of the normal bundle, okay? And then for any vector field could see from the space of H1 sigma, uh, H1 sigma is the space of uh, harmonic vector field, okay, which we uh, I will explain later. And so for any vector field in this space, if they satisfy the following integral uh, inequality, um, so, so this inequality on the left-hand side, the first two terms involves the second phantom form of the MV manifold when we embed it in the Euclidean space. And the EI here is just uh, the local orthonormal frame. And the dual star is the dual harmonic vector field, uh, which I will also uh, introduce later. Then it also involves the scalar curvature. Uh, RM is a scalar curvature of MB manifold M. Then on the right hand side, we have the, uh, we have the mean curvature. Okay? So once this assumption is satisfied, uh, then the index, the weak index of sigma is bounded below by g over d. So d is the dimension of uh, the Euclidean space Rd, okay? And we also get a, we also got a, a free boundary version of such result, um, but with some uh, slightly uh, modifications. For example, uh, for this blue, for this assumption in blue, we need to uh, add some, uh, uh, boundary integral, uh, that's normal because we have boundary. And also the result, where also the lower bound for the weak index will depend on the, the also depend on the number of boundary components, which we denote by R. Okay, but since, um, but in this talk, I will just focus on the closed cases, okay, for simplicity. So, this theorem has a simple corollary, which can be thought of as a CMC version of Shane and Marcus Neves conjecture in dimension three. It says that uh, on a compact manifold M, there always exists a non-negative constant H0, such that every closed immersed CMC surface sigma of genus G and with mean curvature uh, bounded below by H0, uh, satisfies this inequality. So the lower bound, the weak index is bounded from below by the constant times G, okay? And the constant C uh, depends on, uh, the, actually depends on the scalar curvature of uh, manif ambient manifold M, which we will see clearly in the proof. So before we, we go, to, go into the proof, I would like to uh, recall, I uh, would like to, uh, compare this corollary to uh, uh, Shane Marcus Neves conjecture. So let's recall first 
it says that if sigma in the three dimensional m being manifold, uh, sigma is a closed minimal surface and m being uh, rich in curvature is positive, then the index, strong index is bounded below by C times G. Okay, first I would like to say the positive rich curvature uh, is essential because you can easily construct a three manifold with negative rich curvature, uh, but there always exists a stable minimal surface with infinite large genus, okay? And here in our corollary, we don't have any assumption on the on the ambient uh, on the ambient uh, manifold. Instead, we transfer the assumption uh, to the mean curvature. Okay, to the mean curvature. Now let's uh, see. Let's take take a look at the proof. The proof is quite straightforward. Uh, it directly follows from the following inequality. Uh, this 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 uh, sum, summation is just the assumption in the main theorem. And as we can see that at any point on the surface, the Cassie, the harmonic vector field and the dual harmonic vector field forms a, a orthonormal basis. So the first two terms uh, just give you the, the, the norm of the second fundamental form of M. Then this inequality is trivial. So if we let edge sigma square is greater uh, and equal to uh, uh, this this quantity, then we basically uh, make the assumption in the main theorem satisfied. So uh, we get the result. And here, because the manifold is M, we can just let H naught square uh, be this value, okay? And as you can see, if this value is, uh, is negative, then we can just let H naught be zero, okay? then we don't have any coverage assumption anymore. So now let's uh, talk about the proof. So for the first uh, part of the proof, I would like to uh, review uh, some uh, series in Hodge theory. Uh, so consider a one form omega from uh, the first Dirac cohomology group. And we say it's a harmonic one form if the Hodge Laplacian is zero, okay? And the Hodge Laplacian is D delta plus delta D. So D is a differential and, and uh, delta is co-differential, okay? And the uh, Hodge dual star omega, which is uh, induced by the volume form, uh, is still a harmonic one form, okay? And on the other hand, the metric, the Riemannian metric, will give us a harmonic vector field C, uh, which is simply the W uh, omega sharp, okay? Here it should be omega. And by the definition, the harmonic vector field, uh, a vector field is harmonic if the divergence is zero and the divergence of duos uh, is also zero. Then I would like to mention two ingredients that are important in our proof. The first one is that if we uh, define this H1 to be the space of harmonic vector field, then by uh, Hodge theorem that this H1 is actually um, isomorphic to uh, to the first uh, Durham cohomology group, and by Durham theorem is actually also isomorphic to uh, the singular cohomology group. Okay, and which is simply the first Betty number, and in our case. Uh, it's just two, the dimension is just like two times G, okay? So that's the, that's, the, that's the key point why we can connect the index uh, purely uh, analytic quantity to the topology of the surface, okay? And the second ingredient uh, uh, is Boyne's box formula, which actually uh, relates the Hodge Laplacian uh, and the rough Laplacian um, by a rich term. So this, this is the uh, rough Laplacian. If we choose a, um, a local orthonormal frame is simply to be uh, uh, EI, EI, I can see, uh, minus, okay, EI, EI, can see, okay. 
uh, with maybe with a negative sign. And the Ricci term is just endomorphism of Ricci. So if you end the product with uh, another vector field, it's just, uh, uh, for example, if Ricci sigma C, uh, in the product with X, it's just Ricci uh, C uh, X, okay? So with, uh, with this uh, basic knowledge, we can uh, start, uh, we can start the second step. So that is to find uh, admissible test functions. And, and surprisingly, uh, the coordinates of harmonic vector field and the coordinates of dual harmonic vector field, they are all admissible. So they can be used as a uh, test functions for the second variation of formula. So we just, and when I say admissible, it's just they have uh, integration zero on sigma. So now let's uh, take a look at the proof. The proof is simple. So we just let capital F be the inner product of the position vector with the, uh, with the orthonormal basis capital EI. Then, then, the FI integration on sigma is simply uh, this one. Okay, the second one. And then the grading F in the product with Cassi is simply the second one. Then by uh, the de divergence, the definition of divergence, uh, and also because of Cassi is a harmonic vector field, uh, that means divergence uh, Cassi is zero. Then we get uh, this divergence term. And because sigma is closed, we get a zero integration. So um, from the left to the right, we get a uh, mean value uh, of fi is zero, okay? And actually in high dimensions, as you, if you examine the proof carefully, it has nothing to do with the dimension. So fi for sigma, the integration of, over sigma is also zero in high dimension, okay? And a similar calculation can be done to FR star, okay? Just follow, just follows uh, the same uh, steps. But in high dimension, we don't have FR, FI star, okay? Because uh, we don't have a concept of dual harmonic vector field in high dimension. So with these test functions in hand, we can uh, plug into the second variation formula. So, uh, simply, you simply plug in Fi into the quadratic form Q and you sum then uh, from R to, from one to D, okay? D is the dimension of the ambient uh, Euclidean space. So you will get uh, this, uh, this equation. So now let me uh, uh, explain the, how the proof goes. So the simple picture to keep in mind is this one. So you have ambient manifold M that is in let's say embedded in RD and which have, which give you a, 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 a normal, uh, vector, uh, which has normal directions, not simple, uh, not just N1, maybe N1, two, uh, and D minus three. Okay, you have uh, uh, lots of uh, normal directions. And for the closed surface sigma in M, you have a uh, uninormal nu. And, and at a local, at a point locally, you have uh, also normal frame EJ from one to two, and you have a uh, uh, harmonic vector field C. Okay. So with this picture in, in mind, we can just uh, do the proof. So recall the quadratic form Q, FF, uh, is this uh, integration as we uh, explained in the first video. Now you just plug in Fi into this, uh, uh, this formula. So the first thing you need to calculate is this gradient term, right? Okay, so the gradient term uh, Fi will give, you, uh, will give you this sum, okay? Will give you this sum, which involves the capital D, Ej, so capital J is the connection of the ambient Euclidean space. Then we can do a standard decomposition. So this uh, derivative will be decomposed to the derivative along surface and with two second fundamental form. 
Okay. So A sigma is the second fundamental form of the sigma immersed in M and pa capital pi M is the, is the second fundamental form of M when you embed it into Euclidean space. Okay. And because they are all orthogonal, right? Uh, then you will get the, this formula. So the lens, you just sum them together, you will get the right hand side. Now by Weinstock, wine uh, box formula, which uh, we introduced before, uh, which says that the Hodge Laplacian of Cassi equals uh, the negative Laplacian of Cassi plus Richter. And you can just uh, inner product with Cassi both sides, then you do an integration by parts you will get uh, this uh, formula. I remember that uh, in two dimension, Ricci is just a, a Gaussian curvature. Okay, so your Ricci term becomes uh, capital K sigma. Now you plug in this uh, back to the, uh, to this first term. Okay, then you sum R from uh, one to D. Everything becomes, uh, everything uh, becomes length. Okay. And you will also have, uh, uh, Gaussian curvature, the length of second fan form, and the reach term. Okay. And now, how do you get rid of the reach term? You can just use uh, this Gauss equation. Okay, you can decompose the, the scalar curvature uh, into uh, the reach to the normal direction and plus uh, two times k sigma plus a square and minus h square. Okay, this is standard. If you plug in this back to the above equation, you will get our result, okay? And I would like to put a remark here that this calculation also works for dual star. Uh, it's just a little bit more complicated, but it's basically the same. Okay. And when sigma has boundary, uh, uh, all the steps are basically the same, but we need to deal with an extra term that involves, right? If you still remember the second variation formula for free boundary uh, CMC surface, you will have this term, okay? But the good thing is that at any point on the boundary, this term together with this, this term will give you the mean curvature of the ambient manifold, of the boundary of the ambient manifold. So you can transform all the assumptions to the integration of the mean curvature of the ambient manifold, okay? So once you add a strictly, let's say strictly convex condition, then you don't need this term anymore. So now with every all the calculations done, we can start our main proof. So the main proof is standard. It, it is to use a uh, uh, contradiction so let K be the index for simplicity, let K be index uh, of sigma. We can construct a linear map from this uh, space of harmonic vector field to the Euclidean space with dimension two gate D. Okay, so the map is defined as follows. So it has a two gate T component, okay? It has two gate D component because the index I is from one to D and alpha is from one to K. So you have two parts. So the total, the number of components is two KD, okay? And this is a linear map. So by rank nullity theorem, suppose the dimension, the dimension of the domain uh, that is two G is greater than, strictly greater than the two KD. So that means you, you can find a non-zero uh, uh, harmonic vector field from H1 sigma, such that this map uh, gives you zero, right? So that means you have a non-trivial kernel. So when this is zero, that means Fi and Fi star are orthogonal to the, uh, the first K eigenfunctions, right? So it can be used as test functions for the first uh, non-negative eigenvalues of L or sigma. Then if you plug in Fi and Fi star into the quadratic form and you sum them along uh, over I equals one to D, you will get, uh, you will get this uh, equation. And because 
they are test functions for the first non-negative eigenvalues, right? So that means the whole term is greater and equal to zero. And, and, and if you check carefully, this condition is actually, this inequality on the right-hand side is actually contradicting to the condition given on the theorem. So it basically means that the original assumption uh, in red cannot be true. So 2G is uh, less than or equal to 2KD. And that basically means the index equals K is greater than equal and equal to G over D. Okay, that's the proof. And if you examine the proof carefully, we, we can actually give a bound on the number of eigenvalues that are below a certain threshold eta, okay? And in the above proof, we simply let eta uh, be zero. Uh, this is the main proof. Now let's uh, uh, look at some examples. So recall the corollary. Uh, we have uh, some assumption that the, sur the mean curvature of the CM surface is bigger than H naught square and H naught is this quantity. And as long as this condition is satisfied, we have index bounded below by G over D. So now let's look at some uh, uh, common three manifolds and let's see what are those H naught and the dimension D uh, in those specific cases. Okay, the first uh, two cases are when M is uh, R3 or S3, then you can just let H0 be zero, then the dimension, then the D in the conclusion could be, can be three or four, okay, respectively. So this was shown by Cavacanti and De Oliver uh, before. And the second example is a product uh, space S2 cross R. So you can put into uh, R4, okay. So the dimension D is four, and you can let H know if you calculate explicitly, H naught can be zero. So in this case, you don't have any curvature condition, okay? So any, with any CMC surface uh, with non-zero mean curvature uh, has index, weak index bounded below by G over D. And the third example is a product manifold uh, by T2 cross R. So T2AB is the two torus generated by, by the vector uh, one zero and AB. And, and we can add uh, the following uh, conditions. So any flat two torus is isometric to this type of uh, torus. And uh, we actually find a good embedding such that we can put it, this manifold in RD and the embedding and for that embed for the for that embedding we can find H naught uh, is a constant depend on AB. Uh, it's a little bit complicated, so I just uh, write C A B here. And then the first example is three flat torus. And in this example, we can put in we can use the standard uh, isometric embedding. And the ambient Euclidean space has dimension uh, six and you can calculate H naught, uh, that is H naught uh, square equals three, okay? And the last interesting example is burgess Sophia. So burgess Sophia is topologically a three surfeel with a Riemannian metric G copper tall. So it has two parameters and we only consider the parameters uh, in this uh, range, okay? And here the, the, the metric Kappa G kappa tau is defined uh, as follows, okay, which is uh, important in the Hopf uh, vibrations. And now in this case, you can calculate that uh, D can be, uh, can be chosen to be eight and H naught square uh, is this, uh, uh, this quantity. And in particular, if kappa over four tau square is between one and three, that means the left hand side, this quantity is uh, negative, then we can choose H naught to be uh, zero. So in this case, we don't have any uh, cultural assumptions uh, in our main theory. So in all above examples, 
uh, when you satisfy when the surface satisfies corresponding uh, assumptions uh, on H naught and dimension D, uh, the index is always bounded below by G over D. In particular, uh, stable closed CMC surface uh, is a topological sphere. Okay, and this kind of result is closely related to uh, isoparametric problem. So the classic isoparametric problem states that uh, in a closed three manifold, uh, three manifold MG, given a positive number T that is smaller than the volume of M, there always exists a isoparametric surface uh, that minimizes area among all surfaces, which encloses uh, a domain omega with a fixed volume T. Okay, and this surface is smooth is always smooth CMC surface, and it is uh, also a stable CMC surface, okay? So isoparametric problem is concerned with uh, global minimizers, but it's definitely a local minimizer. And a local minimizer would be uh, a stable CMC surface. And people are interested in the topology of the isoparametric surface in different uh, three manifolds, in particular, uh, Ross conjecture that in a three sphere with a Riemannian metric G that has positive Ricci curvature, any isoparametric surface must be a topological sphere. So this conjecture uh, is still open in general. It was only solved in some particular cases. For example, uh, when the volume T is is bigger than the volume M over two, and when the Ricci is bigger than two, this was solved by Ross himself. And all this manifold is conformally flat. Okay, this was, uh, when, when you satisfy this extra condition, uh, of course, Ricci is positive, then the isoparametric surface must be a uh, topological sphere. And also, if you look back at the example of Burgess sphere, if the Riemannian metric is particular uh, G kappa tau uh, with this condition satisfied, then uh, also any isoparametric surface is a topological sphere. So this kind of uh, phenomenon was already observed by Tarabo and Abano uh, before, okay. Uh, so studying uh, the stable closed CMC surface is important uh, in solving uh, isoparametric problems. Okay, so that's that's all. Uh, that's all for the today's video.